I'm a costume designer, which uh, entails bringing the uh, story from the page to, uh, to the screen, uh, involving everything that has to do with the costuming of the film. First of all, you read the script, um, and when I read the script, if it's a good script, it uh, evokes uh, immense amount of imagery uh, from, from the page. Uh, if it isn't a good script, then, and then it, it's kind of a little tougher to, to imagine imagine the world that's being uh, set in front of you. Um, from that point, I start doing research, um, pictorial re research, and uh, put together uh, basically a board and uh, books um, that give both myself and my team and the director uh, a means for communication. It's really about putting together the world within the film. So um, I look at uh, actual photojournalism, I look at um, um, catalog reference, uh, basically anything that I feel would be uh, pertinent to the story and, and then I group them in, in certain sections either by character or by groups of people um, and uh, from that point uh, I also in, in the context of doing that may see something that is perfect for uh, one of my characters and start grouping them that way. Um, at that point I put together the imagery boards which are inspiration boards which again uh, act as a means of communication with the director and production designer. We start the dialogue with the director um, proposing different, different looks and talking about the character and the arc of the character and where the character starts, where the character will end in the film, um, and then speaking to the production designer with regards to the environments in which um, these characters will be living in. Um, and then it kind of evolves from there. It's a jump off point. Um, and you know, very rarely does the first image ever evoke the final image, but it is a, really a, a layer cake of, of ideas that get put together to finalize the, um, the, the, the end product. For me, what was interesting about that movie is that even though it was set in early 60s, I really was looking for beautiful detailed clothing um, from any period. Um, design is design, and so I was really trying to find anything that I wanted to bring to the picture. Um, so with regards to both photo uh, research and actual garments and pieces, I, I curated um, a collection of, of pieces that I loved that I wanted to either um, use in, in its entirety or use elements of those garments and accessories as part of the um, creative details within the film. Oddly enough, you know, it was, uh, it was a film that we built just about every last costume for the lead. So for, for the men, we, did, we made hats, we made ties, we made shirts, suits, coats, shoes. Um, for the women, we made bras, undergarments, uh, the dresses, the overcoats, hats, jewelry. I mean, it was really a design piece, which was quite amazing to start from idea to cloth to making the costume, then aging the costume, because everything was brand new. We had just made it, and then I had an incredible team of uh, agers and dyers, textile artists, that took those costumes and then turned them back into clothing that had a life of its own, a longevity, you know, five years old, ten years old. Uh, we, added, um, we added holes and mending and um, overpressing and basically turning what would be kind of a brand new garment into something that felt more like clothing. So the, the fantasy dress I, I, I love to speak about, it was a, a dress that in its entirety probably cost over 10,000 Canadian dollars um, for a movie that had a tight budget. This was a very uh, big piece of the budget. And so I started in half scale, and I've done that before in Mama, and I've done it before in Carrie, where we start with a half scale refining the design lines, and then um, we did about five different muslins in half scale. And Guillermo and I looked at it and we uh, refined the design both from front, back, side. Um, and when we were finally ready for it, we, we built the actual full scale again in a muslin um, and then had that as a rehearsal dress so that Sally was able to rehearse in it and I was able to watch the choreography, uh, making sure that the design of the dress was going to uh, be enhanced by the choreography and also not have anything that was going to trip her up because that was a huge um, 
a huge uh, concern for me. I, I could, I s had sleepless nights thinking that she might trip on that dress. Uh, in any case, once once the the design was finalized, we uh, went to full scale with the with the fabrics, and you know some of the fabrics were four hundred and fifty dollars a meter, and literally totally cut up and then re replaced onto the dress. And at the end of the day, there were four layers within that dress. Um, and then we had a ton of Swarovski crystals put on, on top. And at some point, there were you know, five set of hands. We were all working on it till literally hours before it played. And we probably would still be working on it now if we, uh, if we had the time. So it was a, a special piece, um, especially since it was such a you know, polar opposite from the rest of the movie. Everything else was very worn in and working class, and this was totally like a dream, a dream piece. In costume, we joke that I'm the great decider, um, and so I would decide things more than, you know, in essence, than design. But no, I had an incredible team uh, headed up by Ann Steele, my assistant designer, and Suzanne Applin, my supervisor. Um, and then my head cutter, Tamio Tomohiro, who I've worked with for almost 30 years. Um, who has an incredible eye for line, and um, and her sewing team were amazing. And then I had uh, Melanie Turcott, who was our textile artist, who had an again an incredible eye for color and texture. And we were able to really have a beautiful dialogue of bringing to the screen a sense of aging and 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 color theory to all the um, aging that um, I've never seen with anyone else. Um, and then I had uh, the amazing Amy Schwartzkopf, who also um, did all the background, um, which helped to create that, that whole world around the, the lead characters. So, uh, you know, it's a team that I've worked with repeatedly, and they're really like family, which I'm very grateful to have. What I speak to very often when I talk about my uh, path is that I was in fashion and I had a line of clothing and I had a store and I was a very ambitious young person um, and going to school and, and, and I entered the, entered the film industry sorry, um, from, the, from the bottom. So I was a trainee and I learned every position within the department. So I worked from the office point of view, from the set point of view, I assisted, I supervised and, and for me it was an incredible um, strong, wide base to learn from. Uh, I you know, know other designers that just become designers, and I think that's fantastic. But I think for me, the fact that I had done this path actually uh, made me a better designer uh, to be able to uh, not only understand the different point of views, but also be able to troubleshoot them before they happen. I mean, we joke about we solve problems before anyone knows that we have them. And I think uh, that speaks to the strength of, of the background. Um, and the other thing is that, that even after 10, 11 years of designing, I assisted some great costume designers like Julie Weiss and Daniel Orlandi on bigger productions that came into uh, Toronto to shoot. Um, and I learned an incredible amount from these people. They were very gracious. And, and I, I tell that to, to budding designers it's wonderful to do your own thing, but it's even better to be able to see someone else's process. Um, you cannot pay for that. You'll never pay for that. And it'll only make you a, a, a better designer in the future. I, I would not be here if it wasn't for assisting those, uh, those people, because not only w did I see the insight of, the, of their process, but um, by opening up those channels of, of community, I was welcomed into their community and, um, you know, again, those doors are usually pretty tight. So with strong work and, and dedication to them in their projects, um, we've uh, bonded and become fast friends, which is amazing. Ultimately, uh, you know, this is all a gift. How many people in the world um, work? Uh, we do this. We work our entire lives. It's the thing that we do the longest in our world, in, in our life. And, and so to be able to do something that you love, um, that you want to get up in the morning and do, that I think it's such a gift. Uh, then to be here and be recognized is, you know, icing on the cake. So um, for me, I am so grateful uh, to be doing what I do and uh, 
always learning and always exploring and, uh, and sharing.